the Bristol Exchange Club. Uh, not only have they been great friends to me and great company to me, I get to see the incredible work that they do every year, uh, organizing and orchestrating and executing the Mum Parade. I get to see how seriously they take it for no other reason, for no other reason than they want to provide a valuable service to the community, to the city of Bristol. They're exceptional people. I always have so much fun when I'm there uh, helping out when I can't help out. I see Terry and Janet in the audience tonight. We had a lot of fun <coughs> organizing that first division, didn't we? <laughs> so I just wanted to mention that. I wanted to say thank you, Bristol Exchange Club. You people are the best. I had a lot of fun. And uh, it's good to see so many of you here tonight. That's all. Just one announcement from me, just very briefly. Uh, I just want to remind folks that October um, is the month that we should check our smoke detectors. And as someone who has had a fire in their house, I can say quite honestly and sincerely that smoke detectors do save lives. So I just want to remind people to check the batteries on your smoke detectors. Thank you. Yes, I have a couple. Um, for those of you who are aware, we have our friends from Nutmeg that tape all of our TV shows. Those of you who are here in the audience, um, you will see that there's orange flyers in the front. They're having a fundraiser in order to continue their community programming, and they're selling navel oranges or ruby red grapefruit to stay on the air. For those of you who are watching at home, you can order through their website, and for those of you who are here with us, you can always order them and bring them to the next meeting. And if you so choose. Um, $24.99 for a large carton of grapefruit and $24.99 for oranges. Great fundraiser for the holidays. So those are up front. Um, I also wanted to make everyone aware of and ask that the mayor put it on the website that Bristol Eastern is in a contest to win up to $100,000 through a safe driving commitment program that will support programs at Bristol Eastern. And it's one of those that you can vote every day by going to the CelebrateMyDrive.com and make your commitment to Bristol Eastern, which is a great way to get more money into the programs that help all of our students. And obviously, safe driving is a critical issue for all of our high schools. So I'm going to pass that down to the mayor. And you can vote every day. Also, um, in addition to Fire Safety Month, October is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So for those of you who have experienced the disease or know someone who has, you know how critical it is for mammograms. So the statistics obviously are not getting any better, although I think a lot of them are due to early detection, but it's critical that people take the time, whether this month or in conjunction with their um, annual exams, to do so. The city of Bristol actually makes it available to all their employees who are eligible to go on work time. That's how important it is. And I also wanted to let everybody know who's watching and is here tonight that Wheeler Clinic and Bristol Radiological Associates do have slots for women who do not have insurance or cannot afford to have a mammogram. So there are really no <coughs> excuses within the city of Bristol to not have one. The other announcement, um, the Veterans Day concert, which you've heard mention of already, there is a poster that's been done. This is going to be featuring the Bristol Brass and Wind Ensemble Tuesday, November 11th at 7 p.m. at the Memorial Boulevard School. And I'll leave this up in front as well for those of you who'd like more information. I'll be covering that briefly in my committee report as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, I have a few things. <coughs> Let me also uh, first add that many of these things that we talk about uh, that are happening in the community are on the Bristol Mayor's Facebook page. You can follow it there. Uh, we post daily the meetings that are going on every every night, the next night, as well as things that are happening in the community. So uh, I think that's a great way to, to learn what's happening. Um, BDDC was just having a special meeting. I stepped out real quick. You saw me step out because I want to get a, 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 a report on what happened. Um, I'm told that the BDDC voted to have Renaissance build building 1B. That's the bigger building. Um, I believe it was with no city financing. Is that correct? Or that the financing didn't come into play yet? Um, BDDC is still working with Renaissance as far as finding all the financing that they can. Um, BDDC is going to have uh, exclusivity until January 31st. Uh, with the property. This is a motion that was made to the city of Bristol. Uh, the city will build 
a piazza and infrastructure. This is recommended from the BDDC to the City Council. Uh, and this is just preliminary, what they told me real quick in 30 seconds. We will be having a special City Council meeting within the next week or two, as soon as the seven of us could coordinate our schedule to have a meeting. Councilman, are you leaving next week? I am not of town from the 22nd through the early evening of the 24th. Okay, so um, we'll coordinate. It'll be either next week or the following week. We will be having a special City Council meeting to address the BTDC motion to the Council and then we'll, we'll go from there. So uh, stay tuned for a date on that. They should be, we should have a date within the next 48 hours, I would say. <clears throat> um, the other thing that I wanted to address quickly is, there's been many questions as far as why the city isn't more involved, the city, when I say mayor, council, more involved in the BDDC, uh, and why there's not more reports to the, to the, to the to the council and so on and so forth. Uh, first, let me say many of the, the meetings that happen at the BDDC have lately, especially, have been taken under executive session, which means they are not open to the public because there was negotiations going on. So I just want to give a little timeline as far as what happened with the BDDC, why we have the BDDC today, and why it's not under the city's uh, control. The Bristol Mall, Bristol Center Mall was purchased in March of 2005. The city was involved in extensive lit litigation to terminate the lease with o OSHA State Job Lab. In late 2006, the Ordinance Committee began a series of public hearings on an ordinance which cre created the BDDC, Bristol Downtown Development Corporation. During these hearings, many people expressed concern that the BDA was already overworked with other projects such as Main Street, uh, North Main Street Streetscape, Southeast Industrial Park, in the Northwest Industrial Park. An ordinance was passed in 2007. The BDDC was created specifically to prepare a project plan for the area known as the Mall at Bristol Center and to supervise the coordinate construction or revitalization of this project. The vote passed five to two. The five council members and mayor that voted for that was Councilwoman, then Councilwoman Zappo, Councilman Minkowski, Councilman McCauley, former Mayor Bill Stortz, and Councilman Minor. There were two no votes. As a matter of fact, there was this meeting that was the infamous scripted meeting. Uh, benchmarks were created for the BDDC, including appointments of members, creation by the uh, bylaws, hiring a project manager, and drafting of requests for qualifications for the redevelopment of the formal mall. The mall was demolished in 2008 and the site was cleared. Proposals were sought for redevelopment of the mall site in September of 2009. Proposals were received in September of 2009. The BDDC and council, city council accepted the proposal made by Renaissance Downtown at Bristol and work began negotiating a preferred development agreement which was finalized on May 2010, which is how we got to where we are today. The city does not have the power to negotiate with BDD, with the Renaissance or any of the workings that are going on on the mall property. This has to go through the BDDC, which was legally formed. So that is just a little history as far as why we have the BDDC and why the council is not more involved. So I just wanted to re, uh, <clears throat> remind everyone why we were, why we are where we are today. And that's all I have for announcements. Um, Reports, starting on my far left. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, reports. Okay. Five, yeah, real estate, we've actually got three items on. Um, I've got a motion to bring up. I hereby move that the city of Bristol refer this matter to the chief building official to make recommendations to demolish city-owned property known as 95 Union Street on Assessor's Map 31. I further move this matter be referred to the Board of Finance for appropriations I further move this matter to refer to the Corporation Council to prepare and or review any necessary documents. I further move the Mayor or Acting Mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. I ask for a second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. I just want to say that this is a um, property that the city owns that we were going to attempt to sell uh, through the um, Real Estate Committee, but the Real Estate Committee paid a visit to that after, the, after no bids came in, which was a surprise. 
the roof was completely rotted, and uh, in my, in, when I was inspecting it, I almost fell through the floor. So, uh, yeah, we definitely would like, like to see this building come down. Uh, let me also let me also add to that that the city will be uh, the blight committee will be taking the court enforcement committee will be taking down the property behind that I believe, um, which is also very blighted. So then we will have an open piece of parcel um, cleaning up that that neighborhood, and then we'll we'll go from there. What happens with it? Any other discussion on this? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. And five B. Aye. Excuse me. I hereby move that the City of Bristol seek request for proposals pending a Section 824 review by the Planning Commission for the disposition of property owned by the City known as 29 Pine View Street by Map 27 of the Bristol Assessor's Office and that the purchasing agent be authorized to request proposals and that he send out a press release in addition to the legal notices and update the City website. I further move that this matter be referred to the Corporation Council to prepare and or review any necessary documents. And I further move that the mayor or acting mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I have one more motion to bring up. I hereby move that the City of Bristol grant permission to the Memorial Boulevard Middle School Task Force to use the Memorial Boulevard Middle School for Veterans Weekend events on various dates between November 1st, 2014 and November 11th, 2014. Said approval is subject to the submission of insurance certificates from all that will participate in the event. I further move this matter be referred to the Department of Public Works regarding janitorial service service and the appropriate payment for said services. I further move this matter be referred to the Corporation Council to prepare and or review any necessary documents. I further move that the mayor or the acting mayor be authorized to execute any necessary documents to effectuate the same. Ask for a second. I have a second. Motion second. and second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, the Mayor's Task Force on Memorial Boulevard. <coughs> Yes, thank you, Mayor. I have reports that I'm going to pass down for all of you. Uh, the purpose of tonight was to give you a progress report since we have now been six months in the making. Um, I wanted to just open with some general comments. Uh, this actually has been a work in progress since our meeting of last Wednesday and was only finished with um, taxpayer um, task force member input as late as 2.30 uh, today with some final changes. So I apologize for not getting it to you ahead of time, but it's not anything that you need to act on tonight. It's really a reference document that I do hope you take some time to read and get a sense of what our, our plans are and um, how we arrived at them. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to say is from a standpoint of chairing the task force, we have been um, blessed with having a, a high level of enthusiasm with people who are participating, both on this side of the dive as well as in the audience. And there really is no barrier, as you can tell from um, the responsibilities that were taken on by so many people who were volunteers. Kim Valente uh, chairing the theater subgroup and organizing that, people going on field trips to uh, other entities to gather data, and all of it is encapsulated in what I've given out to you. To quickly go through this um, so that you can just see what we've done, there's an introduction, the background summary, what we were charged with investigating when the mayor formed the task force, and then we included a um, chronology so that you can see as we went through month to month how our thought process developed. On page three, you will see some preliminary recommendations about the direction that we're moving in. And then from there, you will see at the bottom of page three, continuing on to page four, seven facts of where we believe we're headed. Things that I'd like to point out just in general quickly are the addendums that are attached to this. They include the reference pieces that Jim Albert introduced concerning the use case surveys that we did. Also, there's been a lot of concern about sustainability. So we also included, and I stress that it is a sampling of available grant programs that this building is now eligible for based on the fact that we, if you look at the next page, have finally received um, our listing on the State Register of Historic Places. That has opened up a portal of a variety of grants that we can now tap, which will lessen the taxpayer impact on whatever the, um, the rehab costs would be. 
I also just want to point out, toward the end of the packet, you will see a letter from a private citizen that I received yesterday. And this is very indicative of the support that we've received. And I think that it's also important to show the range of support that we have. The letter is from Don and Justine D'Alessio, many of whom you know. They're excited about this program and have also shared their knowledge of similar programs, including the SEEK campaign, the Adopt a SEEK campaign at the Warner Theater. Um, again, it's a, a fundraising issue that obviously we will explore. We are doing a lot of creative swiping from entities who have done this successfully. But I think it also uh, shows you that we are getting input wherever we go, whenever we have meetings, when we have 20 to 30 people in the room on any given occasion. Uh, we're also very thankful for the media coverage that it's generated because we think that that's brought in additional <laughs> ideas. Constant sharing of um, articles and concepts, as you can see, Andy Adams outlined some of them. This is not a new concept. This is something that is being done successfully in a ton of communities, not only in Connecticut, but across the country. Our own city planner has informed me and shared articles with me when he goes to his planning conferences. There's usually an entire track devoted to what communities are doing from a planning standpoint with these schools because so much of our education cycle has gone into a new direction. There are thousands of schools throughout the country. So again, I think strongly that this is something, the project, the, the building, the location, the synergy with the park, the historic component, all of this should be looked at as a city asset. It's something that just like our parks, like our education, the heart of what we are as a community, it represents who we are, and it also spans generations, and I think that that's important. So the preservation ethic is important. We're preserving something that's important to Bristol's past. It's also quality of life, the arts, the music, the synergy of co-working spaces, of everything that could possibly be potential there for. So we're very excited to read it. We're gonna continue working. The important thing that I also wanted to show later on in our agenda we will have an agenda item to approve a contract with Drummy Rose and Anderson. Um, this is the proposal that they gave us that task force members Peter Del Mastro, Frank Stofsky, and I sat through the interview. They're going to do the condition survey, and we will have that back at the end of January, which will start giving us the cost basis that we can formulate for what's going to happen in terms of um, budget and financials, which is obviously going to be the foundation of where we go from there. Before I move on to a couple of quick action items that we need to take care of as part of this report, I would like to just ask for those of you who are here tonight who have been so integral to the process to just stand and be recognized for all the work that we have done representing this community asset. Thank you. Um, a couple of quick items related to the memorial of our task force that I'd like to fold in is one, um, Jill Malvert has worked with Associated Spring to work out a parking plan referral uh, for when we have uh, an agreement. And we have already set that up and referred it to the Corporation Council's office. We were hoping that that could be reviewed in time for our November program. So even though electronically it's already been transferred, I'd like to ask for a motion that the parking plan agreement as presented by Associated Spring be referred formally to the Corporation Council's office for review. Second. Motion to be executed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. Um, I do want to also note that we do have a cleanup date of November 1st. It's already been talked about. Um, all of you are invited to come. To date, we already have probably 65 people who have signed up to be there, and now we're hearing from youth groups confirmation groups, the high school groups that need that community credit, that will be coming as well. So for those of you who are interested in joining us, we are doing that from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, we do have poster and schedule of everything that's happening. If any of you have a place to post it, that would be great. And most importantly, the, um, the veterans show on Sunday afternoon, which is going to showcase community talent. We actually have tickets with us tonight. This is what the ticket looks like. And if uh, anybody's interested in purchasing $5 tickets, we have them. Um, Debbie, raise your hand. Okay, you can get them from Debbie so I don't have to leave the dais. Uh, we are looking to fill the room. And for those of you who have been to Showcase of Stars, you know the quality of events that will be produced that afternoon. And I think it's important for all of us to see the potential of what that theater can be. So I encourage you all to attend and buy your tickets 
we are looking to fill the space so that's 600 tickets. Councilwoman, can I just say if you if you bring some of those to my office, we'll make those tickets available for sale in my office as well. Okay, I'll give them to you before we leave tonight. Um, so the last item that I need to resolve is the fact that we recognize and there has been spirited discussion amongst all of our task force members and those who attend that we do not want this to be viewed as a liability, as a taxpayer burden, or as yet another program that has to be funded. As I said, and I will reiterate, it is an asset. It is something that represents the best of Bristol. But we do understand that this is going to be something that will encumber private fundraising, grants, and all of the rest. Um, Andy Adams, during public participation, talked about what other communities are doing. We have that opportunity as well, now that we're listed on the state register especially. Um, I, I haven't drawn comparisons often to the Historical Society where I'm also involved, but I was berated for it after the last meeting because right in front of us, literally a quarter of a mile from this building, is a neglected Bristol school that the Bristol Historical Society bought from the city for a dollar in 2001. And since that time, a committed group of private citizens has raised privately with very little public funds, over a million dollars to renovate and bring that building back to life. That too has a historic stake. It's the oldest municipal building that was built that's still standing at Bristol. It was built in 1890. And I think we can do a similar thing, and it can be done. So for those of you who are interested in joining us, we are always looking for additional people. We're looking for um, a great synergy and energy on November 1st, and we're looking for people to attend on the afternoon of Sunday, November 9th, and also our official Veterans Day ceremony at 11 o'clock on Tuesday, November 11th, as well as the 7 o'clock Bristol Brass and Wind Ensemble. From a standpoint of private financing, all of that money that is raised, once costs are covered, are going to go into a fund that will continue to pay for some of these expenses. The long-term view is to have a fund that will always be in place to pay for or to serve as grant matches, etc. We have an opportunity to have a fund agreement and begin that process immediately with the Main Street Community Foundation. So at this point, I would also like to refer to the Corporation Council's office for the second time, an agreement for them to review and to clarify, uh, we, the Memorial Boulevard School Task Force, is a public entity, and so as such, I would like them to review the draft agreement Per the requirements that have already been vetted, we are also designating the Park Department as the secondary beneficiary. If for some reason, through IRS designated law, we do not go forward with this project, we must then designate where those privately raised funds can go. The Park Department of the City of Bristol already has a fund at the Main Street Community Foundation, so we felt that that was the closest parallel. So again, from uh, a standpoint of that type of regulation, that's what would happen but they meet on November 7th, and so I would like to have the Main Street Community Foundation have our reviewed draft agreement back to them so that they can vote. The sooner that we have that done, the sooner we can start accepting private dollars and grants. So I would make that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion made the second in discussion. Let me just add, and I don't want to speak for court council office, but they will do their best to get it by November, November 7th, but I don't want to put a time frame on there because they have regular city business as well, so they'll do their best, but no guarantees by that date. I understand, Mayor, but I also did pull the Park Department agreement, and it's um, pretty much the same one, so it should probably make it a lot easier for them to do that review. Um, unless there's questions, that is the um, component of the report that I wanted to present in addition but to the I think those other things involved in that Park Department uh, agreement, uh, so again, I'm not going to hold them to November 7th. As, as soon as they get it, the uh, task force will get it, but they have regular business to, to do too. Uh, I know we've been talking about this agreement for a couple of weeks, um, so I'm not going to hold them to that seventh date, but they'll do their best. I'm sure they'll reach it, but just in case something happens, I'm not going to hold them to the date. Any other thing? Um, that's it for the Memorial Boulevard Reporter. Yes, motion made, seconded. Uh, any other discussion? Thank you. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Uh, committee reports, I'm going to start on my left to give Councilman a break <laughs> before you get into code enforcement. I'll have dinner while you do. None, Your Honor. None, Your Honor. <laughs> none, Your Honor. 
Yes, I do. <laughs> Sorry. I'll try to be brief. October 2nd, the uh, School Readiness Council is holding a director's forum for early childhood providers. Dr. Myra Jones Taylor, the Commissioner of the uh, Office of Early Childhood, is scheduled to be the guest speaker. Uh, great news for Bristol, uh, for the uh, Bristol community, the uh, Connecticut chapter of Reach Out and Read applied for a grant from the from Liberty Bank on behalf of the Bristol community to bring the Reach Out and Read site to a pedestrian uh, pediatrician's office in Bristol. Dr. Susan Adiyankas practice, the uh, pediatric care center, will be implementing this program. The, uh, I have a couple motions from the salary committee. Uh, the first, uh, the salary committee recommends to the city council to approve create the creation of a public safety technical support specialist position from uh, local 233 with a code of 10 uh, at $12.57 per hour to uh, $28.51 per hour in the police department and to refer to the board of finance for funding. Second. Motion made. Motion made, second. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. Have another motion. Uh, the salary committee recommends to the city council to approve the elimination of the position of administrative assistant, local 233, code 5, at $17.51 an hour to $19.49 an hour. Uh, upgrade the sales ratio clerk, a local 233, code 5, $17.51 to $19.49 per hour to code 6 at $18.73 to $20.81 per hour and upgrade one principal clerk, uh, local 233, code 4, $16.36 to $18.24 per hour to a senior administrative clerk position, code 6, $18.73 to $20.81 per hour in the assessor's office and to refer to the Board of Finance for informational purposes. Second. Motion made second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. I have a third motion. The salary committee recommends to the city council to approve creation of a part-time position 18 hours a week with the extended hours of July and January of, pr of principal clerk in the tax office, local 233, code 4, $16.36 to $18.24 per hour, and to refer to the Board of Finance for funding. Second. Motion made second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. One last one, and now done. The salary committee recommends to the city council to approve the proposed revision to the personal policies and procedures in regard to overhiring and to refer to the Board of Finance for informational purposes. Second. Motion made second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Yep. Councilman? Rich? Councilwoman? Aye. Code Enforcement Report. Um, at the end of September, we received <coughs> another code enforcement collection payoff through the city tax office. This one was in the amount of $64,612.37 for 30 Lincoln Place, which had been demolished, I think that was December or February. I think that was the first one we did, no, no, second one we did, no. In the winter. So again, as indicated, um, these payoffs do come through, uh, maybe not at the exact time that the house is taken down, uh, but this one um, was again a combination of interest, liens, and code enforcement. So uh, that one has now come full circle as well. Um, we also have uh, a request to the City Council for our standard um, assessment freeze program. This one is for 82 Tulip Street, and the recommendation from the assessor is to approve. And um, there is a prior structure and post-renovation photo display that I can send through, but this is a standard motion. Um, this month, code enforcement would have fallen after our council meeting, so usually you will see these on your consent agenda, but it didn't work out this month. So I will pass this down in case anybody has any questions or would like to review it, but the motion would be to approve the application for the assessment freeze for 82 Tulip Street. 
I have a second. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. <coughs> And my last item I would just like to say from an observation standpoint, I went to housing court with a uh, displaced tenant on Thursday who was a former tenant of one of our um, more popular landlords. And it was an interesting process to see come full circle as to what happens to tenants who rent from certain landlords and um, how it gets disposed of in court. This tenant ended up being very successful based on the amount of documentation that she has. And I think that we might be able to um, see more of that as the tenants who are affected by um, poor living conditions and code enforcement violations that are not corrected in a timely manner um, actually start to learn the process and gather that data. So that was an interesting uh, foray, and I think that there will be more of them as well. Thank you. Let me just... Um, and a couple more things to code enforcement. The city took down another house this week. It was on School Street. This was a house that had been vacant for a number of years. Number of code violations. I believe this is house number 13, guy. I, I think it's number 13 that the city has taken down during this administration. Uh, this does not include the houses that the banks or owners have taken down due to uh, enforcement by our code, code team. So. Uh, work is being done and you see the positive things happening in the neighborhoods. Um, just to touch base, Councilwoman talked about 60 plus thousand dollars that came in from the Lincoln Place. This goes into a revolving account. This account was formed uh, so that we don't, the city does not have to keep putting money into the code enforcement budget. As we get the money back, it goes right back into this account to be used again. So it's working as we planned uh, and the money's coming in different times. So it, it's a great thing to happen. So the city does not have to keep funding this account every year as the budget uh, process goes along. I have one thing to read here. Uh, Mayor's Marketing Task Force. I'm just going to give you a little history then I have a motion. North Star report was commissioned and paid for by generous donors and local business, Bristol Chamber of Commerce and City of Bristol. The North Star report provided many valuable recommendations and helped us develop a branding, logo, and tagline. One of the recommendations was to assign a brand leader or brand manager to implement marketing and branding devices, uh, branding services as is designated in the North Star report. The Bristol Chamber of Commerce contracted with the city to provide marketing and branding services. So we are all now at a point where the Mayor's Marketing Task Force has to transition into a formal committee. I'm very impressed with the efforts of the Marketing Task Force. They have worked tirelessly for many months to get great product from North Star. They conducted public hearings and surveys to get, public, to get input from the public so that we can do more to promote the city its people and businesses. On behalf of the city and the people of Bristol, I want to thank the Marketing Task Force members, Dave Mills, Howard Smellner, Mickey Gowasher, Jack Ferraro, Sumero, John Smith, Jim Albert, Mark Wazluski, and I was, I know I said that wrong. Uh, Henry Martin, he knows who he is. Henry Martin and Sheila Thibault. We're ready to move into the next phase. I'm forming a marketing committee whose functions will be to collaborate with the Greater Bristol Chamber of Commerce to promote the city, evaluate and assess the implementation of the contract with Greater Bristol Chamber of Commerce and to make recommendations to the Mayor and City Council on the marketing brand efforts. And I have a motion, if I could have a motion to be read, please. Sure. So, the committee will work under the auspices of the Bristol Development Authority for administrative support and report from time to time to the City Council. There are so many good things happening in Bristol. We have an exceptional gift of people and solid and dedicated business. I'm looking forward to seeing how they can build on the hard work of marketing task force. And then again, ask to the business who donated the, towards the effort of the Chamber of Commerce and especially in our task force. Nice job. Okay. All right, so uh, can I have a second to uh, the committee to work on the auspices of the Bristol Development Authority and for administrative support and report to the time to time to City Council? Can I have a second? Second. I made the motion, I'm sorry. Second. Motion well, made the second in discussion. We just say uh, the members of this committee will be Dave Mills, 
Howard Schmelner, John Smith, Mickey Goldwasher, and Jack Ferraro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. Unfinished business starting my far right. <coughs> Quick one. Do you think we could send a thank you to the businesses that contributed to the to the initial, uh, you know, I think it was twenty-five thousand dollars that the chamber put together from local businesses that helped us uh, get the marketing company from that from uh, Tennessee, I believe, North Star, yeah. and uh, even the sixty thousand that they're contributing. Uh, I think we should thank those businesses that have contributed to help us uh, head in this direction. Yeah, if, if the chamber hasn't done so already, we will definitely do that. We'll work with Jim. That's it. None. None. <coughs> and chair has none. New business, standing right for our left. No. No. Okay. I have one. Uh, You may know tonight the joint board approved all the funding necessary to complete the purchase of street lights. We are also in a position to secure maintenance for the poles by approving the contract with Turi Masterson of Torrington. The binding of the lights themselves will create significant savings, something that I, as mayor, continue to pursue. Once the street lights are purchased, it is expected that the next fiscal year will see a replacement of light, lighting fixtures as a separate initiative, which will secure more savings. In order to secure the street lights, however, the contract with Connecticut CLB uh, for purchase of the street lights needs to be signed. Therefore, I ask for, for the following motion to authorize the mayor or acting mayor to execute any and all documents necessary to complete the street light purchase and to refer matter of the corporation to the corporation council for any necessary action. So okay. motion made and second. Seconded. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Yes. Resignations. There's one resignation. It's from Art Ward from the Mayor's Task Force on Energy Consumption. Motion to accept the resignation. Uh, so moved. Motion made. Second. Okay. Second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Item nine. Which is appointments. Mayor's task force on energy consumption to appoint Gregory Fortier to replace Richard Demers, conservation environment member. Resignation. No term. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Mayor's Task Force on Memorial Boulevard Mayor's Appointment. To appoint David Mills to replace Henry Martin. To appoint Janet Williams to replace Bill St uh, William Storts. School Readiness Council. Mayor and Superintendent of Schools Appointment. To appoint Dr. Susan Arienka. I know where my doctor's is. Yeah. <laughs> Pediatrician member to replace Dr. William Brownstein. Resignation uh, to term 8, 2016. That's all I have there. Item number 10. Resolution authorizing the mayor or acting mayor to execute any of all documents relating to the quality enhancement grant from the Office of Early Childhood for July 1st, 2014 to June 30th, 2015 for $25,024 and the President Board of Finance for any necessary action. There is a resolution to read. Uh, to read resolution. I'll read. Be, be it hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Bristol, Connecticut, that Mayor Ken Cocaine, or Acting Mayor, is hereby authorized to execute any and all documents related to the application funding grant for the Quality Enhancement Grant from the Office of Early Childhood for the period of July 1st, 2014 to June 30th, 2015. One year grant, including but not limited to any amendments to said application and any final funding, grant documents, and any and all agreements and any amendments thereto with local service providers to implement grant. Second. Second. 
Motion to remain second to discussion. Hearing none, roll call for my far right. Yes. 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 Chair votes yes, motion passes. Item 11. Award of contract 2P1493, Architectural Services for Roof Replacement at Northeast Middle School, Silver Pacelli and Associates Incorporated for $19,100, with authorization for Mayor Rack and Mayor to execute any necessary documents. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. And none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Aye. Can I revisit the marketing task force? I have another motion. I think I should have read this one instead. Um, I move that the marketing committee be formed to work under the auspices of the Bristol Development Authority and its functions to collaborate with Bristol, with the Greater Bristol Commerce, with the Greater Bristol Chamber of Commerce to promote the city, evaluate and assess the implementation of contracts with the Greater Bristol Chamber of Commerce and to make recommendations to the Mayor and City Council on marketing and branding efforts. Can I have that motion please? Mm -hmm. Second. Motion remain second in discussion. Yeah, Your Honor, just like a point of information to make sure we're doing this right. Did you need us to withdraw the um, first one from a little while ago? Or no? If, if, if that's yes, what you motion, it oh. might, yeah, it might okay. be easiest so, to So, um, all right, so why don't I first move to ahead. withdraw the earlier motion regarding the task for us, uh, regarding the marketing committee? Second. Okay. Motion remain second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. Good to catch you, uh, Councilman. Um, now, can I have a motion? I'll read it again. To move that the marketing committee be formed to work under the auspice of Bristol Development Authority in its functions to collaborate with the Greater Bristol Chamber of Commerce to promote the city, evaluate and assess the implementation of the contract with the Greater Bristol Chamber of Commerce, and to make recommendations to the Mayor and City Council on marketing and brand efforts. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Yes. Didn't we have a contract of some sort that we... We do. Okay, so what, what is the... This is now going from the task force to an actual committee. But this talks about the partnership with the chamber. This talks about how they're going to report to the, to the functions will collect what the what the functions are. That the contract still in place. Absolutely, but what we expect from the committee okay. as council. And there's a discussion. So the committee, the committee is is falling underneath the umbrella of the BDA. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Which is what we discussed. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I have opposed the motion passes. Sorry about the confusion there. Item number 12. Authorization for Mayor Ranking Mayor to execute contracts with Quality Data Services Incorporated for software license and annual support of QDS software and to refer to Corporation Council for any necessary action. So so motion second. second. Motion remains second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. Item 13. Award of contract to A1491, annual requirements for maintenance of municipally owned street lighting to Turing Masterson, Masterson <coughs> Incorporated, with authorization for Mayor Rack and Mayor to execute any necessary documents. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. Item number 14. Award of contract to P1522, Engineering Services Survey of Existing Conditions and Conceptual Design Engineering for Memorial Boulevard School to Drummy Rosane Anderson Incorporated for $25,000, contingent upon approval of the task force and authorization for Mayor or Acting Mayor to execute any necessary documents. So moved. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. Yes. Um, this, is an ex this is an engineering survey on existing equipment which we've already had surveyed twice since 2008. In 2008, Memorial Boulevard task, or there was another Memorial Boulevard uh, re report done, which, which covered all of the equipment. Uh, in 2010, the Space Needs Study covered all of the equipment. I'm gonna read one little thing from it. 
just the existing boilers have met the end of their useful life expectancy and should be replaced with new boilers. I'm going to assume that in the last six years, boilers haven't improved. And I don't think we need to spend money on an engineer to tell us that they're broken down. This uh, Memorial Boulevard study that was done, and I believe was done through the school board, cost the city about $70,000. It included all the all the uh, information needed on the school, uh, its existing conditions, and the improvements that should be made to make that theater into a useful, viable commercial theater. Um, I don't see why we should spend another $25,000 to do this sort of study again, to do a, a minor study just on existing conditions. We know what the condition of that building is. The mechanical stuff is outdated, undersized, and needs to be replaced. This stuff can actually start to go off a bit, and rather than spend twenty-five thousand examining it, spend twenty-five thousand dollars replacing something. Any other discussion? Let me let me uh, ask. Uh, and I guess I'm going to ask Councilman because you're on the board. Uh, has the task force looked at the re this report that Councilman is referring to? Yes. Uh, that report um, was one of our primary documents that we've worked off of. And while I do understand Councilman Carlson's concerns, what we're looking for is much more than telling us about the boilers. And his point is well taken. We, we know that. But we need a more of a global view, both from a cost budgeting standpoint as well as a prioritization standpoint. And either Roger Russo or um, Frank Stosky, who's with us tonight, could probably speak more eloquently to this than I can, but Jeremy Rosane was actually the company that did the Memorial Boulevard. So what we're trying to do is layer on their existing knowledge of the building, not recreate the wheel, and take it to that next level, fitting what we know needs to happen there, heating and cooling being a primary issue, but there's other issues. There's ADA issues, there's access issues, security issues, windows, ceilings, staircases, elevator use, um, all of that. Um, we're looking to take it so that we can present back to the Board of Finance and the City Council an accurate picture of what those costs represent. So if you read the memo that Roger prepared, um, it's not only a building analysis, but it's also assigning construction costs to correction of building deficiencies. So they were by far, based on their um, body of knowledge and what they already know, it was um, far and above a better fit for us because we are not going to be recreating the wheel and having yet another study that gathers dust or doesn't give us real information. I think strongly that this is the right way to go because what we don't want to happen is six months, two years from now to come in and say to you, oh, we need $3 million because we didn't know that, that, that. That's what we're trying to avoid and um, I will yield the floor to to Roger if he would like to expand, or Frank even, to give additional information, but that's what we're trying to do. Good evening. Uh, Frank Stosky probably has been through the building a lot more recently than I have, but I will tell you that we do have a lot of information on the Memorial Boulevard School, and it may be the study that we have relating to the boiler. Uh, when the building was shuttered, we have the asbestos report, so we have a lot of information on the structure. But when the building was shuttered and we started talking about selling the building, uh, a number of city buildings came, uh, city departments came forward to try and relay potential uses and potential costs associated with that, uh, with the reuse of the building. Um, we really didn't have any specific costs attributable to it. I think what the committee is trying to accomplish is to try and ascertain what is truly necessary before you take the next step before Board of Finance. And they may be things such as egress. There are a number of stair issues that since the building has been shuttered as a school, you can't leave in their current existing state. Uh, they were, um, as, as a functioning building, you could have left them. Now that the building is shuttered, to reopen it, you need to address issues of egress. And it's throughout the building. Uh, the elevator is in poor condition. Uh, what, what specifically needs to happen to the elevator to bring it up to speed? Uh, the building as a school never had air conditioning. If you truly do need to have air conditioning within the building, depending on what the end purpose would be, what would be, the, what would be a reasonable assessment for what those costs would be. And I think that's what the committee is trying to accomplish, just trying to 
get a scope so that by the time you meet with the Board of Finance, you can actually uh, come up with an action plan. Anything that has to do with adaptive reuse or repurposing is going to take into um, key issues. The key issues that we've identified are the ADA code compliance, the zoning compliance for uses in parking, the mechanical electrical plumbing upgrade, and anything that would be considered the self-supporting uses which the theater falls under. So, um, you know, I think that this is probably the best bet and the best investment that we have with this integrated design process that they're proposing to get those numbers that we need. Discussion? Yeah, you know, my, my concern is not limited to boilers or a few minor things. I, I, I do know the building has got a considerable amount of trouble with it. Um, and I think it's been made clear in two reports already. Um, we will need to make sure that this engineer knows uh, what the final use for each and every area would be to you know, have a complete report that will work for them. Uh, and again, I, you know, this, ori this original report was very thorough on the theater area. It covered all the heat load and everything else. So I, you know, I don't see any reason to reinvent the wheel on it. No discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. One no. Motion passes. Item number 15. Resolution regarding approval of senior volunteer tax relief pilot program. And there is a resolution to read. I want to care to read the resolution. Yes, I got it. It resolved that in order to promote the goals of scientific education, literacy, historical, governmental, charitable, and nonprofit entities located by <coughs> in the city of Bristol by drawing upon the skills, knowledge, an experience of senior citizens. The City Council of the City of Bristol hereby establishes a senior volunteer crack tax relief pilot program for senior citizens who, who choose to donate their time, talent, and experience by volunteering to provide service to, services to such entities as follows. Qualifying senior citizens who volunteer to provide services to qualify in scientific education, liter literacy, historical, government, charitable, and non-profit and entities located within the city of Bristol shall be eligible for a tax credit on their real property bills, ta tax bills, in accordance with the provisions there hereof. In order to qualify for the benefits of the Senior Citizens Volunteer, volunteer Tax Relief Pilot Program, taxpayers must be age 65 or older, own real property in the city of Bristol, must occupy the property as a principal residence, and must have an annual gross income not more than the maximum amounts promulgated annually by the Connecticut Office of Policy, Policy and Management in accordance with Section C, Connecticut General Statute of Section 12-170AA-B-2. Participating senior citizens may earn an annual tax credit of $300 by performing a minimum of 50 hours of volunteer service in the fiscal year to qualified nonprofit entities. B. The program shall apply to volunteer work performed in fiscal year 2014-2015 and after in accordance with the provisions of the resolution and the guidelines and policies referred to in paragraph D. The tax credit shall be applied to the tax bill due July 1st following the fiscal year in which the work is performed. The tax credits earned by the participants in the Senior Volunteer Tax Relief Program shall not exceed $24,000 in a fiscal year on a first-come, first-served basis. The Assessor and Senior Executive, Senior Center Executive Director shall develop guidelines and policies to administer, administer the Senior Volunteer Tax Relief Pilot Program, including guidelines for qualifications for participating seniors and participating nonprofit entities for timing and form of applications. The city shall review and evaluate the Senior Volunteer Tax Relief Pilot Program after one year from the date of its approval. Ask for a second. Uh, resolution made and seconded. Discussion. Uh, let me just say that this is something that I brought up uh, last year and, and I think it's a great thing. I want to thank the Ordinance Committee. I know you, you did a lot of work on this. We looked at a lot of different plans. I want to thank the Corporation Council for jumping into it as well. Uh, I'm excited about this. I know the seniors are excited. Uh, and hopefully they'll take advantage of it. 50 hours a year is not a lot of time. It's one hour a week. They probably are, most of them are probably already doing that as it is. Um, so I want to thank the Ordinance Committee and the Corp Council. Your Honor, just real quick to add, um, 
I've heard from a lot of people out in the community who have said, well, you know, this might not be able to help as many seniors as you think because there are still a lot of seniors that need help that might not be able to commit any time to um, uh, volunteer service and, and the like. And we, I, I don't want to speak for the Ordinance Committee, but my impression is we all certainly understand that. And it's important to every one of us up here, Ordinance Committee or not, every one of us up here that's been elected by you, to do what we can uh, to ease the burden on all of our citizens, but especially our senior citizens. From my perspective, this is a good place to start, and it is a pilot program, so that over this next year, we might be able to continue to improve, to figure out what uh, alternatives, or maybe not alternatives, but alterations could be to this ordinance uh, to make it more beneficial to more people, and we can grow up from there based on how it works uh, throughout this pilot year. And that's the intent here from what I understand, and that's why I'm excited to support it tonight. And I thank uh, the chairman, uh, Mr. Carlson, and my colleague, from the second district, also on the ordinance committee, Mr. Meisnikowski, uh, for leading this effort, and I'm excited to support it tonight. Thank you. And I just have to say one more thing. Uh, apparently, this program is going to go over fairly well. Now, we, this program was designed similar to uh, a program run by the city of Manchester. Um, they have a similar demographics to us, so I think it'll go over fairly well. Um, People are apparently already attempting to sign up down at the senior center, and I have actually received a email from one person who wondered if he qualifies for it because he has donated 28 gallons of blood. Unfortunately, that was listed in our qualifications. <laughs> it is a special. I have a question. Go ahead. So, in the documentation that was provided to us, it says that eligible residents must first obtain an application from the assessor's office, but then they have to turn them in at the senior center. Is there a logistical reason why they have to start in one city office and then end at another? Is there something that the assessor's office needs to do for them to assert an eligibility? Okay. Um, who wants to answer that? Well, well um, our assessor's coming up, let me say that. Patty at the Senior Center. The senior Center uh, has has a list of all um, volunteer places. If someone wants to come on the program, perhaps volunteers at, at a, at a uh, somewhere that's not on the list, that's still open. She will look at everything that comes in, and the, the list will be adjusted. Um, that's a good point. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor.